Now I want to go ahead and automate the process of running Python manage.py collect static in a GitHub Actions workflow. Now, if you think about it, we actually have a lot of places where we could automate this. First off is in DigitalOcean itself. So when we were actually building our service, the actual web application itself, we put an environment variable to disable collect static. Now, I actually want to leave it this way because anything that makes my building of my web application take longer is something I don't want to have happen. The next thing is I could actually use a job in DigitalOcean to run collect static as well, much like we did with manage.py and migrate. Now, I certainly want to run migrate on DigitalOcean because that's where all of my production workflows are running. So this makes sense to put it here, right? So in other words, the actual database itself will be directly correlated and in the environment variables for this environment. So it makes sense to put it there. Now, that being said, the actual command of collect static really just relies on the environment variables for the AWS secret access key and the AWS access key ID, which you may recall back to when we actually configured those things. And it's actually really easy to recognize this as well because in .env, we should see those keys in there as well. So there is one more place that we can actually use to automate the running of collect static, and that's done on our local repository. So if we did pip install pre commit, we could actually use that to run a variety of tasks prior to committing our code with git, you know, git commit. So that's another cool option as well, but that one is not the one I want to use. Instead, I just want to use that GitHub action and let's go ahead and set up the baseline for it now. So first and foremost, I definitely want these keys now on GitHub. So let's go ahead and jump in to DigitalOcean first and let's make these spaces access keys. I'm gonna generate a new one and this is gonna be our try Django GitHub workflow or let's say repo. We can just leave it in as that. And of course, this is gonna create a key value pair that we wanna grab and we'll go into our repos, settings, and secrets. Now I'm using my current user here. Obviously you might be doing the same thing. You're not gonna be using the Cutting for Entrepreneurs user, um, unless of course you were on my team. But anyways, so let's go ahead and add in these action secrets here. So the very first one is simply the AWS access key ID. Then we're gonna go ahead and save that. The next one, of course, is going to be for our secret key, which is right below that one. We'll paste that in there. And then AWS secret access key, C cert. That's funny. Okay. And now we've got that. And we'll go ahead and do that. And then the final one, this one doesn't really have to be a secret, but I will leave it in there as one because you might wanna just not let the public know about this one in particular. And so this one is whatever your bucket name is. In my case, it is now try Django 32. So I'll go ahead and add that one in there and there we go. So we now have the environment variables that we need for our secrets. As you may notice, this is missing a lot of environment variables for building this. And that's because I'm actually not working off of the actual repo that I will actually be running this on. That's something I'll set up off the video. But anyway, so we have the gist of it, right? Now we need to actually create the workflow itself. So inside of our GitHub workflows directory, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this collect static YAML. And what we wanna do here is create a workflow that only runs when we want it to. So whenever you forget about how to create these workflows, just go into actions, new workflow, set up a workflow yourself, and then copy their baseline workflow, just like that. I do this constantly because it's just an easy way to start from you know, fresh overall. Um, and then I just get rid of these branches here, okay? So if I ever wanna bring them back, I'll comment them out and just run with the workflow on demand until I get it right. Then I'll put it on these branches and whatnot. But I actually want this one to just run when I do these one-off tasks because what I'll end up doing off the video is combining all of this into prod.yaml. Okay, so the first thing is we need to jump into main.yaml 
and see how we actually configure the baseline environment. Since we are doing collect static as a one-off workflow, we need to make sure it's all set up correctly for that one-off workflow, which would include setting up Python as well as installing the requirements and perhaps even running pretty much everything right here, except not using test. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy all the way up to steps. And then at steps, I'll go ahead and delete all of this and paste that in, okay? So it's pretty straightforward, right? So we check out the code, we set up Python 3.6, the version I'm using on this project at this point. Then we run the install things that we need to run. And now I just need to run collect static, okay? So the things I don't need are the Postgres database stuff. The two things I do need are these, right? So we definitely need the Django secret key to run any Python manage.py command. Having debug off is probably a good idea because if collect static fails, we should know about it and having debug off will be more likely the case that we will know about it, okay? So we just need to set up the environment variables, also run in the command of collect static and then dash dash no input, simple enough. Now, of course, the environment variables are based off of our .env, so I could totally just copy this, come in here, paste this in. This is exactly how I would do it when I'm working on these things, right? So I don't actually type everything out slowly. I just copy it. So secrets dot, just like this. And then boom, simple enough, I think overall. And then just copy and paste where I need. Okay, so it looks like it's like going off of the screen or it's not set up correctly. So if we close down that Explorer, we should see um, everything working as it needs to. Okay, so now that we have this, this should actually run just fine. And so what I'm actually gonna do is just append this also, in my case, to prod. I said I was gonna do it after the video is done, but I just wanted to show you where I do it and how simple it is. I would do it right before I actually push this into production, like the main branch into production, and just put it right there. And it's really just that simple. Now, of course, when you fork this code, if you ever end up doing that, you need to make sure that you are setting these keys because if you don't set these keys, then that workflow is not actually going to run. Um, but at this point, we have a pretty solid workflow and something that I'll let you test on your own and just let me know if things are going well. Now, before I go though, I do wanna add one thing in here and that is inside of my static files, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say JS and another new folder, and we're gonna call it CSS. And inside of there, we're actually gonna be using Bootstrap. So if you go to getbootstrap.com, click on a download, go to the compiled CSS and JS, hit download. This is gonna download a zip file for you that you're gonna go ahead and bring in to your project, maybe not all of it, um, but if you open this up, let's just zoom in a bit, um, we should see these files here. So CSS is gonna be bootstrap.min. So let's go ahead and find it. So it's literally just bootstrap.min.css. And we might as well bring in the map as well. So these two files right there. And I'm gonna just drag this into my project, okay? And then we'll go ahead and grab the JavaScript bundle as well as the map, so bundle. And we might as well just use the minified version. Minified version is just gonna load slightly faster. And we'll bring this in. Now, the only reason I'm actually adding these things is to ensure that my collect static is actually running correctly in production. You don't actually have to use these things. And I will mention actually resetting this up later um, and how we're gonna actually use those static files in a future one. So don't worry if you skip that part. Uh, but now that we've got that, it's time to actually full on test this. So let's go ahead and run it into production. So we'll do git status, git add. I'm gonna leave out the production workflow first because I wanna add everything else first and test that, test the collect static workflow altogether to see if it even runs. So we'll go ahead and copy these. So git add, git commit and collect static workflow. And then git push origin main or whatever branch you're working on. And there we go, so it's now in there. 
So we could go ahead and verify this on the Coding for Entrepreneurs repo. So in my case, that's where I'm verifying it. Um, it would be on your user account, assuming that that's what you're working on. But in here, we should be able to see that action for Collectsthetic. And I think I just left it in as CI. So let's actually rename it at the very top of Collectsthetic. So we'll call this run or let's say collect static for Django static files. Git status, git add that collect static file, git commit and updated collect static action, git push origin main. We don't have to rename it, of course, but it makes it a little bit easier to see all of my various workflows in here. This probably should say example collect static for it. Uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and run this workflow. Now I actually know that this is not gonna succeed because I do not have the correct keys in it for AWS, but that's the part that should fail is the keys. It should say, you know, uh, permission not allowed or something along those lines versus anything else. But uh, we should see it setting up the environment correctly uh, and then going to attempt to run collect static and that part failing, which I think is fine at this point because it's really just about getting to the point where all of us can use this as long as we end up putting in our keys. And there we go. So we run collect static and we should see the error of, you know, permission. Not, oh, in this case, the bucket name is not correct because we didn't actually put in a bucket name. So that is good so far. At this point, I think you could test it on your own and see how that shakes out when you go into production. Um, hopefully this actually makes it nice and easy for us when we do go into production with all of our code that it's automatically going to be updating our spaces to have that collect static files, right? It's not going to be interacting with the media files at all, just static files right here. And in this case, I actually should not see that CSS and JS folder. In this case, I do not see those things, uh, but you might if you actually set up all of the keys correctly. So in a moment, I'll actually have them all set up correctly and then I'll run it again. Now, before I actually put this into my production workflow, there is one more thing I realize we can add, and that is inside of this step right here, what I can do is I can add one thing called continue on error and say that being true. This means that anytime I run collect static, it will still have an error, but it will continue to whatever that next step is. Now I'm doing that specifically for prod.yaml. And again, another reason to use these actions to do it is because when we actually did it with the build process, whether it's through here, right? So the actual disable collect static, if we turn that to zero, that would actually prevent the deployment altogether, which is something I don't want to have happen. So in prod, I'll go ahead and add this in here as well and allow for that and continue on error. So I'll go ahead and do git status, git add, and then git commit and allow collect static step to fail, git push origin main, and I will absolutely stop in a moment, do some things off the video and ensure that the collect static not only will work, but it will also fail. So both the things. So let's go ahead and first off, just try it from failing. We'll rerun all jobs, uh, not necessarily all jobs need to run, uh, but definitely collect static should, and this one should certainly fail. And we'll just let this go. All right, so the one-off, it did fail and it looked like things went through. Uh, it did give me that error still. Let's go ahead and look at build.yaml. We see that allow click static to step to fail. This is the commit message. We go into our build here um, and collect static is in there and it does fail, right? So it's definitely failing in here, uh, but it's actually not causing an error. It's not preventing the rest of it from running, uh, which of course is good and bad, right? So you may or may not want that to happen, but it is still nice to know that it does exist in the case of prod.yaml. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video again wait to actually update these keys so that we can then verify that it is fully working and it's actually in our space. All right, so I paused the video and updated all of the settings for the Coding for Entrepreneurs user. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this workflow right now and take a look at what ends up happening for this workflow in just a moment. And it's gonna take a minute before it actually runs, but here we go. 
Uh, so we jump in here now and let it build and finish off. And here we go, it's running Collectsthenic. I don't have initial errors right off the bat, which I think is a good sign because that likely means that it is actually running the Collectsthenic. Um, so I can actually verify this by jumping into my spaces and just see if those files are actually coming through or maybe have started. I just wanna see if the folders are in there and what do you know, there they are now. Um, so I can actually feel pretty confident that Collectsthetic is working, at least working to the point where it's adding in the new files and the way it should with Django. So realistically for me, I would actually not wanna have this continue on error going forward. I'm gonna leave it in there because I would imagine a lot of you are gonna be forking this code and you might be running this workflow without those keys in there, whether they're correct or not, doesn't really matter because I actually do want some of these other things to properly fail, as in pushing the code into production, as well as using the Duo CTL um, or the you know DigitalOcean command line tool. Um, so there we go. Now it's working exactly. Collectsthetic built successfully. Um, things are looking up. So at this point, I think we've automated the vast majority of things we'll need to automate with GitHub Actions. If there are other things that we'll need to automate later, that's something I'll for sure introduce. But I will say that using Bootstrap, one of the things that we could consider doing is actually compiling Bootstrap in here as well. So what I just did was actually get everything related to Bootstrap and perhaps your project won't need everything. So there is definitely other types of ways of compiling this, but I think it's kind of outside the scope of Django itself and try Django, uh, but it is something to be aware of that your actions can not only compile it, but then also run collect static for you, uh, which I think is also pretty sweet. All right, so let's go ahead and keep going.